Hey, what's up everyone out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing video. Today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking about how to target sockeye from the boat. We're here with Nick Popoff from Peel the Real Guide Service. So if you guys wanna learn more about that, it's coming up next. Alright everyone, so before we dive in here, if you guys can do me a huge favor, go down here, hit that thumbs up button, and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Every single week we're putting out videos teaching you guys how to fish, and also just fun, entertaining stuff, so if you love fishing, tap subscribe. Now let's dive in dude, let's tell me about this stuff. Alright, here we go. Alright guys, so we're going to start with the rod and the reel. So for this specific fishery, we're going to be using anywhere from a 9 to 10 and a half foot rod. I like a medium heavy rod. The sockeye tend to be a little bit smaller, but you also have to have enough backbone to handle a big summer steelhead or even an accidental bycatch of a Chinook. So I use a nine and a half foot <clears throat> up to 10 six. All right, so as far as the reel guys, I use a Okuma low profile reel with a line counter. If you don't have an Okuma, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna be the end all be all. So whatever it is, nine and a half foot rod, Low, pile, low profile line counter reel. All right, moving on to the setup. So I start up here. Typically I run a bead up above this bead chain swivel here. And is what that's gonna do, it's gonna stop it if you reel your rod or your line all the way to the tip of your rod, it'll stop it from poking or going through the eye. I bring that down to another duo snap. And that duo snap's real important because this is where the business end is. So this three way swivel right here, is going to be the first part of our setup so you want to there's a it's almost like a t-shape you want to tie your do or clip your duo snap into the top swivel and then off this t-shape here we're going to run another swivel and this is going to have our first leader off of it okay and this is i i typically measure them at an arm length if you can see here about from my and that's not exact you can do longer or shorter depending upon your fishing where you're fishing Next, I go down to another, and this is any, I run 20 pound on this first leader here that goes to my spin and glow. Next, we're gonna run to another three-way swivel, and this is about three and a half to four feet. And this can vary as well on depth and <clears throat> how far you're fishing. It just depends if you're fishing deeper water, shallower water, you may change this depth. So anywhere from three to five feet could be your, your next three-way swivel. And so now you have your next three-way swivel and it's gonna be the same thing. So we're gonna run another leader about the same length as my arm to my spin and glow. Now with my spin and glow, I'm gonna run two hooks set up and you wanna check your regulations because some places only allow single hooks, some places allow double or three hooks all together, whether it's one, three different single hooks. So check your regulations as far as your hook configuration. But in this specific, specific setup, I'm running a double hook setup and then three beads to a spin and glow and then one more bead on top of that. And all that bead on top is gonna do is be the protector. It's gonna protect it from getting weeds um, you know, it can get extremely weedy out here as this weather begins to get warmer and warmer. And you really want to make sure that this is this bead will really do do great things to protect the seaweed from getting into your spin and glow and binding it up. So that becomes pretty important. So now, if we recap here, we have our our top three-way swivel with our first leader to our first offering to our midline to our second three-way swivel, and this is where our second offering is. Now, off the bottom of this three-way swivel, and this is where it differs from plunking versus boat fishing, right? Fishing from the boat or fishing from the bank. Fishing from the bank, you would continue on down with another midline and another offering, but this is just gonna go from the bottom of your three-way swivel, you're just gonna add about a 20 to 24 inch dropper. And that's just to another duo snap that has my weight on there, okay? So you're gonna clip your weight to that, and then you will have, I'll see if I can kind of hold this out so you can see the full setup. But you have your weight and both of your leaders. And now, the reason we don't run another one is because it's just too long and too much to control from the boat. So it's very similar to your bank setup, 
It's just a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter leaders, a little bit shorter midlines. Now, let's get into the baiting process. All right, guys, now for the business end, what we're gonna use to catch these fish. So these are millennial coon shrimp. This is what I prefer. It's not what you have to use. There's many different types of shrimp. There's many different types of coon shrimp, many different brines and cures, and a lot of people make their own. So um, these are great store-bought ones. And I'm gonna show you how to rig these on your sockeye setup from the boat. Let me grab a little good one here. So the thing to know about these coon shrimp is they're extremely delicate, okay? So this part right here, this little crease, is where their carapace is. And if you if you go through their rough, I mean very firmly, it can just fall apart and basically this whole shell will detach. So it's very, very important when you're threading this bait on that you do it very slow and methodically, otherwise you're gonna go through a lot of bait. So all I'm doing here is I'm taking this, there's two notches, I go into the second notch here, there's, and I just go very slow. This meat that lays in the tail here is pretty firm, and so you gotta kind of work the hook through there slowly, and I'm keeping pressure on the outside of the, the shrimp's head to kind of keep the carapace on there. And as you can see, it begins to poke through, and this is the most important part. You really gotta finesse your hook through there, because as you can see, even as gentle as we went through, there's still some fracturing in there. So then I'm gonna slide this up firm to my egg loop knot right there. I'm gonna take this egg loop, and I'm just gonna push it open, and basically, go right around this tail here. So as you can see, this tail will lift up. And I like to get it right under those, there's some little ribs in there, like little, almost look like little fins. And I try to get it right underneath there between the fins and the neck of the shrimp. And then I just snug it down. You don't wanna pull super hard because it's not like a beta eggs where you wanna cinch it down on there. You pull too hard, you're gonna detach the head from the tail of the shrimp and you're not gonna have any bait on there when you cast it. So we'll do that on our first one, and then we'll get the second one on, and I will show you guys how to cast it, because it can be quite tricky. So same thing with this one, guys. Third knuckle, second or third knuckle back, just real slowly through the meat. Right up through the head, very, very softly. And then I kind of push that piece up onto the, t up to the knot there. And then I'm just taking that egg loop and right around that coon shrimp. And just pull it nice and snug, not tight, just snug. So now we got our double setup rigged up with our two coon shrimp to our dropper baited up and ready to cast. Okay guys, so now for the casting portion of this setup. This is a lot of stuff hanging from one rod, so it's really, really important to cast these things properly. You're not just gonna take it over your shoulder and whip it out there like you normally would. It's more of like a lob style cast. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reel this up as close to my tip as I can get it. I'm gonna look at my area down where I wanna cast and kind of find my target area and I'm gonna do kind of like a slow underhand lob almost. And I'm trying to kind of lay these baits out there and I'm gonna be feathering it with my thumb as well. So as I cast this, they're gonna shoot out and I'm gonna kind of slow it down as it hits the water so those baits will settle out away from my dropper and the dropper will hit the ground and the baits will float up and they'll be sitting on two different tiers of the water column. So. Here's how we do the casting portion, guys. I kind of just let it lay there, make sure it's not tangled here. And then is what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do an underhand sweeping motion back here. And lay them in the water, just like that. And as you can see, when my weight hit the water, both of my baits were straight out away from my gear. They weren't all spun up on each other and my baits were still intact. It's really important when you make that cast that you pay attention to your shrimp because a lot of times if you cast it too hard, too hard you're gonna rip the head from your shrimp and you're gonna be fishing just a tiny little piece of shrimp that's not gonna be super effective. So that's the setup, fishing for sockeye from a boat. 
top to bottom. Now I'm gonna place this rod in the rod holder and hopefully catch one. All right guys, while we wait for a fish to bite, that rod we just got cast into the water, let's just talk a little bit about kind of what you're looking for when you're sockeye fishing from a boat. People overcomplicate sockeye fishing, steelhead fishing, and most fishing in general. So it's a, it's a big river, you know, you're fishing on a very big body of water. And it's easy to get caught up in looking at this huge vast area and going, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. So you really gotta pick an area, pick a boat launch, an area you're familiar with, um, and an area you feel comfortable with, and, and just go through there and look for certain things. You wanna look for long flats, so you know consistent depth, maybe off of a steep drop off, or that comes up from a consistent depth to a steep drop off. Um, you really want to target anywhere from, you know, 8 to 15 feet of water. Um, typically, that's going to be your zone where you're going to find even shallower than that, you know, 6 to, you know, 15 feet of water. Um, but as far as what you're looking for on the bank, you always want to look for current breaks. So whether it be a point, a wing dam, um, a flat that has like, you know, some sort of uh, uh, piling or, or um, you know, wing dam associated with it. Uh, you wanna look for deep transition drop-offs where it goes real shallow to real deep. Um, those are the like the areas that are gonna, in this huge river, the fish still use the bank to navigate, especially when the water's high. So finding those areas that, that have some sort of current break or a current seam is very, very vital in finding these fish. And like I said, most of all, it's getting out, familiar, familiarizing yourself with an area and, and getting to know that area. Um, the way I do it is I take my boat out and I scan the edges and I look for different you know, ledges and drop-offs and rock points and things like that. And by doing that, you start to fish places and you'll start to narrow it down. You know, okay, I'm getting bit on my inside rods on this flat, so maybe I should slide over. And then you kind of dial it down. All right, guys, now that we've shown you the sockeye setup and how to fish it from a boat, we're gonna roll some footage of this in action. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Yes, got him. Fish. That's the right kind. Yeah, right, right. Oh, it is it's a sockeye pole. Oh, it it's a big one. That's a giant. Yeah. All right, guys, another beautiful Columbia River sockeye. All right, everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you learned a lot, and hopefully you can get out after some of these sockeye before they're gone. They're gonna be in the Columbia for another couple weeks, and then if they if you can't get them in the lower river, you just kind of keep following them up as they travel up into the lakes where they're gonna eventually spawn. So thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget, drop a thumbs up, and do not forget June 28th, summer apparel drop, be on our website. All the items are limited, so if you don't get them now, you ain't gonna be able to get them. See you guys.